insurance agents from around the world. Welcome to the Insurance Guys Podcast. My name is Scott Howell, your fearless host and leader, insurance agency owner and insurance evangelist for I Protect Insurance and Financial Services, based out of Huntsville, Alabama. And before we get started on today's episode, please help me welcome, he is a six foot three sophomore from Sarah Land, Alabama, parade first team All-American rivals, five-star recruit. He is a fantastic insurance agent and a great American. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together and welcome the incomparable Mr. Bradley Flowers. How are you, Bradley? Great, Scott. How are you today? I've got my favorite t-shirt in the world on today, guys. I have just received my glove box t-shirt might be the softest t-shirt i have ever received in my life and by the way folks i just forgot to say the correct intro the insurance guys podcast drum roll please is now powered by glove box that is correct folks you heard it here first so every intro from this moment forward that you hear on this podcast for the next year will be welcome to the insurance guys podcast powered by glove box and i am so excited to have them on as our title sponsor this year bradley flowers would you like to add to that i don't think there's a better partnership it's it's, it's one of those tools that as soon as we used it like they do such a great job with the the onboarding for the agency and the customer like it's a it's one of our arms now i feel like yeah absolutely i when we got our glove box app the first week i was like this is it this this is this is what every independent agency needs because you know, and we get emails every week from different carriers like, hey, our new mobile app. And I'm like, mm-mm, I don't want your mobile. I don't want my people using your mobile app. I want them to use the Glovebox app because it's ours. It's branded for iProtect. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, well, and, and, and too, like, you know, with us, I mean, the reason I got behind Glovebox so early was I was betting on Andy and Ryan. Absolutely. You know, so. Absolutely. Guys, that is a beautiful segue into today's guest for the show. And we are humbled, proud to have them today. And this is going to be a very good podcast that I think a lot of you are going to get something out of today. So without further ado, we are proud and honored to have very special guests on this podcast. First, hailing from Denver, Colorado, former agency owner and current co-founder of the mobile independent agency app that is sweeping the nation, Glovebox. And second, He is the leader of innovation and digital officer at Nationwide Insurance, responsible for maturing the company's digital capabilities and creating new customer-centered digital products and services. It is my profound honor to introduce both of these men today, second-time guest and first-time guest on the Insurance Guys podcast, Mr. Ryan Matheson and Mr. Chayden Kandahari. How are you guys? Great. Hey, that was a mouthful, wasn't it, there? Hey, let me tell you something. For a, for a small-town boy from Alabama, I'm going to give myself a B+. Plus. Hey, you, you did great. You did great. Yeah. This is yeah. not his first day either. So. <laughs> we have got a lot of things to talk about, guys. You know, I, w- I wish Andy was here with us today. I know he couldn't be here. But, Ryan, I just want to say thank you for you guys sponsoring the Insurance Guys podcast this year. And I think this is a beautiful time for you to introduce to the 250,000 insurance agents that will listen to this podcast, tell them about Glovebox. Because I guarantee you some of the people listening to this have not heard about it yet. I love it. No, thank you guys. It's an honor to be able to sponsor the next year of the best insurance podcast on planet Earth. You know, Scott and I hung out last summer. We were able to have beers. We were able to talk insurance. And uh, we're all like-minded. We all want to grow and enhance the industry. But um, a little bit about Glovebox and where we're at right now and where we're going. So if you think about your agency as a whole, you've got three main platforms that you utilize. You've got your AMS system, your CRM, and your Raider. That's all internal, right? That's all for your agency. That's all to help you grow and service internally. But there's a fourth piece missing, and it's your client engagement platform, the CEP, right? Big, big piece that's been missing in independent agencies for you know the better part of a decade now. And so that's what Glovebox is building. That's what we've built is the client engagement platform for independent agents to leverage. And it's the thing that's external. It's the thing that you use to, um, again, engage with your clients, whether it be buying insurance, buying more insurance, servicing insurance, with the whole goal of keeping your clients in front of your brand where they can buy more insurance. And so 
that's what we're building. That's what we're working tirelessly uh, to champion for the independent space, which we know and love. So that's what Glovebox is. And some things I absolutely love about this is our clients, when they get on the mobile app, because I, I've been on it a lot, I think right now we're up to about 25% of our clients are now on Glovebox within our agency. And, you know, we continuously, you know, send out the emails. I know you guys send out emails to our clients about, hey, the Glovebox app, jump on it. But I love the fact they can file claims and they can grab their ID cards. They can contact the agency. They can do all this stuff from one central location that is branded as our agency. And I just think it's great. I mean, the look, the feel, everything about it is is top notch. And, you know, if I'm going to work with somebody, I'm always wanting to work with the best in the industry. And I know you guys are that. So thank you. Yeah, it's it's super early for us. And we just got funded, which is beautiful. We are building out so many products and features. We want to be the entire value chain of your agency from the very first time a prospect comes into the agency to them being able to get quotes through it for an agent to be able to upload quotes through it for a client to be able to say, yes, I want to buy these quotes through it on through to the servicing piece. And then let's cross sell mm. more insurance. So we want to right. be the entire value chain for you and, and not just a mobile app but an entire platform. So, right. Hey, Chayton, yeah. I want to jump you in on this. Cause I know you've got a hard stop here in just a little while. Uh, and again, I really appreciate you being on. This is this is big to have somebody, you know, that's up the food chain and with a carrier that's willing to come on here and talk about what we're about to talk about, which is APIs and integration. And I don't know if it surprises you to know how much in independent insurance agents like Bradley and I know about, you know, opening up APIs and the things that we talk about regularly as far as technology on this podcast. You would not think that from a guy who has his shirt sleeves cut out and sunglasses on right now, but we do. Talk a little bit about how you guys vet vendors to work with at Nationwide. That was one of my questions I had today. Thanks for the question. Thanks for having me here. You know, first and foremost, you know, we need to make sure that vendors are part of, can help contribute to what is our strategy, right? What is our goal that we're looking for? In our space, one of the things that we want to be able to do in the digital world more broadly is to provide solutions that are available in real time, on demand, in the moment, Right, and you talked about you being agents. Isn't that what you want? I think that's what you want. And that's, I mean, things like the mobile app, things like websites, why do you go to that? You go to the mobile app because you just love it? No, you go to the mobile app because you want to do something on the spot. We get today flooded with information. There's data information that is galore. And to get the brain share, the mind share of somebody out there, when they have it, when they've got those five minutes of thinking about insurance or thinking about something, you got to capture it. And if your solution is not ready and available to use, you're missing the point. You know, you know that. You, you guys know this better than anybody. Because somebody calls you and you're like, hey, my system's not up and running to give you a quote. You lost that sale problem. Yeah, right? Hey, listen, we, we just had a podcast with uh, one of the biggest technology agents in the country talking about. In the world. Sp excuse me, world. Speaking openly about increasing the speed of our individual agent Re reducing websites. friction reducing friction i mean that's that's what we just talked about right and so to me so let me i want to start with that simple concept digital can mean a lot of things a lot of people but simply put what customers agents anybody want anybody out there wants real time in the moment and on demand solutions all right so then now how do you bring that to life that becomes the question and you need to be able to bring that through life with you have internal solutions or solutions with partners, right? And you want to be able to use partners that end up accelerating your vision. That's the key word, accelerating your vision. And by the way, that they have the right expertise and the right investment in the areas that we want to also, that we want to improve for ourselves. So for example, you know what? We want to be able to have a very seamless quote and buying experience or a very seamless experience for sales and service. So then you go and look at a partner which has solutions for it. Right. You know what? We happen to be doing some kind of right now an experiment with Glovebox, right? We are really in the early stages. It's just basically that to be able to then act as that middle layer so that agents don't have to go everywhere for solutions out there, but be able to go to a one-stop shop to save you time and eventually have the real-time interface. People want two things, a reduced time to do anything and pay less money or make more money. And that's what you have to gravitate your solutions towards. Hey, I've got a question for you that nobody thought I would ask on this podcast today. As what you're in charge of relative to 
digital solutions and innovation, innovation, how do you personally feel Nationwide Express is doing with that? You know, my personal opinion is that considering how long it's been the market, it's actually Uh going really well. Now, we have spent a lot of time making sure that the experience is absolutely what we want to do. We actually, you know, this is, by the way, for Express, we actually partnered with some agents and they helped us build the thing. Right, that was exactly. one different way versus having a lot of middle people to help us. We got that. We got re- direct feedback from agents out there on how to build it. Is it perfect? Yeah, I knew you guys. T- I knew you guys tweaked it about uh, six months ago, maybe. Yep. I think I think it was about six months ago where you tweaked a few things that was from uh, agents, you know, giving feedback on how it could be better and those types of things. And now we're and it is it is pretty seamless. Integration. Yeah, we use it right now with PL Raider. Yeah. Yeah. Talk, talk a little bit about, have you had to deal with any, you know, Henry Ford is famous for saying, if I would have asked my customers what they wanted, they would have said a faster horse. Have you, mm-hmm. talk a little bit about the struggle of, you have yeah. this group of agents over here saying we want this, and you have this group of agents over here saying, hey, we don't want any change at all. Talk about the balance of those two things and trying to make everybody happy while still pushing that innovation initiative forward. It's a great question. And if I had to be honest, you're sitting out here and said you said there's one silver bullet answer, I would be making it up. But they are paths forward. They are certainly good paths forward. What is the biggest issue, the way you described it, is resistance to change. And why is it resistance to change? Because people think in the absence of being clear about what you're trying to do, people always go to the negative. And so what you have to do is any of this, you have to position it in terms of what's in it for them. And so you know, I said it up front, which of your friends or your peers or folks in the agency world don't want to save time so that they can, in terms of servicing, nothing so they can actually spend the time bringing in your business. Tell me right. one person doesn't want to do that. Nobody. And so you have to mm-hmm. be relating to that North Star. That's how I think about it, Bradley. You got to have your guiding principles. You got to have your key things and don't get bogged down by a little bitsy here and a little bitsy there. That will bog you down all the time. Yeah. You know, unless you can, any analogy to, you can draw with your, you know, if you have a spouse or something you live with, you go, you know what, I really want this room here. I really want that room there. I don't really want this color faucet. I like to put this color faucet. You always have got to take a step back. What are the few things that are really super important? The rest, we will be able to live with. That's what you have to, you have to have an optimization lever. And that's what I say well, I think, typically. I think business too, I think there's a direct correlation business and technology, there's a direct correlation between people who are good at the game whack-a-mole are probably also good at business because sometimes it feels like you make this change over here Mm -hmm. and something else over here happens. And I think as agents, we have to realize that when changes are made, yeah, there may be some a step back in the beginning, but like my my website, like he said, keeping, (laughs) keeping your focus on the overall vision and the goal you don't mind these little missteps along the way. Well, you, it's going to happen. Yeah, right. I think what Chayden said, where they're actually asking agents what they want, um, I think is hugely valuable. I think it gets missed, you know, more times than not with with carriers not really bringing agents into the equation on the front lines. Like, what is going to make your job easier? How can we distribute and protect people better? I think that's a huge statement that you made that I think uh, is not to be overlooked. You know, the, well, one of the things I'll say out there for you guys is you have circles of influence, right? You know who you want to partner with, where do you get your leads from, and how do you actually integrate all of that? Mm-hmm. That's what we need to become better at doing. So it doesn't seem yeah. like this choppy process for everybody. Yeah. Imagine if you could do that and you could say, phew, that's smooth, right? To that point, Shaden, and I just went independent last July, and I had the benefit of having the best minds in the insurance industry to pull from guys like Bradley, guys like Ryan, you know, all of these technology driven agencies to pull from to help me make my decisions relative to the technologies that we were going to use. And one of the things I've noticed is as a new independent agent, and quite frankly, Bradley has been in the same situation too with his agency because he's only been an independent for going on two years now. What we do is we test a lot of these different technologies up against each other, and that takes time, and that takes, you know, it just takes time sometimes to test three or four different raters 
to find which one works the best for your agency. Same with management systems, same with CRM systems. And that's where we have spent a large majority of our time within my agency is is testing, 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 and then making a decision on who's going to be the best for our agency. Doesn't mean it's going to be the best for yours, but it's the best for ours. One thing I like that you did, and I didn't realize you were doing this at first. Yeah. When you first went independent, you signed up for every vendor under the sun. I did. And at first glance, I was thinking... As someone who had been through that, thinking, well, that's a screw up because yeah. you're going to make things. But then, Little what did I, you know real- I was going to fire three quarters. I of realized, <laughs> I realized very quickly yeah. that you were vetting them, and you, exactly what you were doing we're is you were signing up for the free trials and yep. comparing yep. A B testing, which is super smart compared to just picking somebody because right. their logo is pretty, right, right, and yep. it's not functional, or yeah, because, we- or because they're the cool company right. that everybody's signing up for in the right. Facebook groups, right, you right, know, right, right, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we would literally sign up for a trial, then sign up for another trial, sign up yeah. for another trial with like four different raters. And you have the infrastructure in your agency yeah. to do that oh, with yeah. your people, with right. Justin and folks like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You got to have technology people there to say, uh uh-uh, uh, no, this ain't going to work because of this. Mm-hmm. If you don't have that, it's hard to have the knowledge and the, you know, the benefit of somebody yeah. that can really say yes or no to that. Next question I had for you, and I know you got to go soon. So, kind of briefly discussed this at the beginning, but how do you see integrations benefiting independent agents in the future? And I think you've probably touched on that by saying speed, not not having to take as much time to, you know, get that quote ready and get it to a customer and reach them where they need to be reached. But yeah, and are I there think any over other? Time, those are part of it. And over time, you know, you don't have to necessarily understand every application of every carrier. Right. You know, and, and ins- you know, insurance is complex, especially when you start going into commercial lines, right? And you've got the type, different types of policies that you sell, whether it's BOP, PA, going to, you know, you name it, right? It's, it's complex. And if you're going to have to learn everybody, every carrier's applications, you're going to spend your time doing that versus actually bringing in business. Yep, that's right. And so, and so the APS allow you to abstract that out. Right? right, and allows you to have what I consider this thin layer on top, that of of a, of a front end that allows you to be able to seamlessly then interact with, with uh, with other carriers back end application. Yeah, no doubt. Do you have any thoughts yet, or have you been able to sit back with a cup of coffee and think about Amazon's partnership that was announced two days ago with Next on business insurance and coming to market with that, or do you even have an opinion on that yet? The opinion I'll share is it's super important for us to make sure that we know, based on our strategy, the type of partners that we want to work with, um, right. who we're going to work with. You know, we obviously have to keep all of these things very confidential till we are ready, um, sure. you know, to partner with folks. But the whole space of insurance is exploding beyond the core distribution channels of, right. you said, you know, IAs, EAs, direct the whole partnership distribution model is becoming more and more evident. The OEM distribution model is becoming more and more relevant. And so we need to make sure we pick and choose where we believe the market is going to go across the board. Not just when I say we, not just nationwide, the whole insurance industry does. Right, right. As long as while you're doing that, you realize we, we all have the relationships. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding with you, man. <laughs> At the end of the day, what you got to figure out is the customer agent relationship. That's right. It's still important. And, and listen, listen, I said that jokingly. You know, Mike Stromso says it best. You've got to meet your customer where they want to be met. And in some cases, I do believe that buying insurance online, if it is an easy, cut and dry, you know, just something simple is probably okay. I'm, I'm not saying people, you know, necessarily just – absolutely shouldn't be able to buy online but as i got on my soapbox in the last podcast and went absolutely nuts the more complex and you mentioned this at the beginning of the podcast a commercial case is or even a lot of personal line uh, cases that we see day to day where and i mentioned this again last podcast kid lives with the mother but the, the, the dad that they're divorced and the dad pays for the insurance but the mom bought the car and the house is in my mom's name but I want to take out you know that can get very complex and it's hard from a 
contextual, and, and maybe we get there with AI in the future. I don't know. But right now, today, I see a lot of insurance cases that I would not be comfortable with somebody just getting online that doesn't know very much at all about insurance and purchasing a policy. And that's I mean, just I think my you said opinion. It, I think you said it a little bit there, Scott, is around how do you demystify this through AI? How do you sure. demystify this through? And then, you know, like anything in life, technology at some point will be ready. Yes, I agree. The question is, and what I love about this show is you guys look like very, very progressive. They'll be right. winners and losers like in every industry. Right. That's right. Yeah. And do you want to be on the top of your game no matter what it is? Do you want to be on right. the offense or do you want to be on the defense? To that point, before you have to go, tell our 250,000 listeners to this right now, because I'm one of them. I'm exactly like they are. What do agents need to do knowing what you just said is hanging out there to stay in the game and to stay relevant? You know, I, I personally think that, you know, what the where agents have a big advantage is you are in the local communities correct relationships you have those relationships there's no other, there's nothing else that can be you know there's no reason to say you can't be the digital agency off that local community correct and, you know why can't you play both games right well it's, it's kind of like, and that was my whole point in the last podcast right. but it's kind of like we talked about with warren barhorst a couple of weeks ago you see these insure tech carriers not going to name any names, but everybody knows the ones I'm talking about that come to the market and their entire marketing strategy and their entire strategy is anti-agent. It's direct to consumer. The agent channel sucks. Right. And then all of a sudden they start backpedaling mm -hmm. after a little while. And now you hear about them giving appointments and things like that. And wait a minute, this 300 year old industry has a pretty dang good distribution system that exactly. tends to be working. And, and it is Granted, working. there is some innovation that needs to happen around that, right. and agents certainly cannot rest on their laurels. Right. Hey, so yeah, Bradley, let me finish with this because I do have to run. Complacency is the detrimental of being relevant in the future, right? We need to make sure. So all carriers like us, we have to innovate. We have to move the ball forward. Agencies like you are doing that. We should continue to do that. And know that you need to win on your merits, just like everybody, mm -hmm. because that's the society we live in. Complacency kills. Absolutely. All right, we appreciate you being on the show. Thanks for having me. Ryan Matheson. I should have asked for a nationwide appointment while we had him on. Yes, there. you should have. <laughs> you, had huge him, opportunity you had him there. in the corner, Bradley. You had it. <laughs> and, and, and you know what he would have said? I, I have nothing to Scott, do with that. So Scott calls me about a month ago, and he says, Man, I've been having just the toughest time getting getting appointed with this carrier, da 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 da, like all these struggles. And I was like, Well, who is it? He's like, State Auto. And I'm like, We interviewed the CEO a month ago. <laughs> He's like, I oh, know, I didn't want to ask him for that. I know. And and then they give me an appointment and they don't give me a middle market appointment. So I called Chris Perdice and I said, Chris, man, your bo your boys, your boys with Mike, right? CEO. <laughs> Y'all they're they're tight. And I said, I need a middle market appointment with State Auto. He said, well, hell, they took mine away last year, and That's I and he good. said he <laughs> said I can call them for you and ask though, and I said, Chris, if they took your appointment away, there is no possible way they're going to give me an appointment. So, uh, we we had the I had the biggest laugh over that when he said I can call Mike and talk to him. And I said, there's there's no need if they're taking yours away, they they definitely are going to not. I don't know, man. They time. haven't seen you with the sleeveless glove box shirt on though. That's, That's intimidating, true. man. I don't know. That's true. I can move mouth. So so <laughs> yeah. Scott. Scott decided he and I sent you the picture. He needed to not go to the bathroom to change into his glove box shirt. He needed to do it here in the studio. And I, yes. so I have a picture of us two sitting here, me fully clothed, him not fully clothed. <laughs> yes, and I'm half naked. And I asked Bradley if I wanted, know, he wanted me to take my pants off too. It's all it's it's already been passed around the industry. It's yeah. being it, that it picture's weird. floating out there. Yes. It gets weird it gets on the weird IGP. Off Hey, especially when we're together. Oh. Hey, hey, Ryan, I want to tell you something while I got you on the show. So one of the things I wanted to say today to our audience is, you know, when I was in the Marine Corps, we had something called Mustang officers. Mustang officers were guys who were enlisted that after their four years of service, they went to uh, officer candidate school in Quantico, Virginia. And Mustang officers in the Marine Corps held in a much higher regard with enlisted Marines because we always saw them as one of us and they had all the stories and they could always say, Hey man, 
I was, you know, I remember when I was a Lance Corporal and, and those kinds of things. And one of the big things with you guys that I was super impressed with is you and your brother. Not many people know this. And, you know, if you want me to edit this out, I will. But you and your brother come into your dad's agency. You, you are a big part of growing it to, I believe, nearly a $100 million agency. And to me, when I heard that, and I knew you guys were starting to climb Mount Everest of getting glove box off the ground, that was a huge deal for me because here's two guys that have lived it, breathed it, been on that, been on our side of it. And I think any time a vendor, I hear that a vendor was a former agent, and I know they know their shit front yeah. to back. It yeah. it means a lot to us as agents because you, you guys are Mustang officers. You're not just you're you've been in it, you've seen it, you've done it. So congratulations yeah. on that, man. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, I mean, it was uh, it was a big decision to sell the agency and kind of step out of our comfort zone. Technology right. is nothing like selling insurance. Like, yeah. it is night and freaking day. Think, but you think you're in a competitive <laughs> industry in insurance, and then you step off into technology. Yeah, I've heard yeah. it's it's it, very cutthroat. To Bradley's point a few minutes ago, speaking of techology and insure techs that think they're just going to go out and do this on their own really and i didn't really want to say this well i mean i didn't want to really get into this with him on the show earlier because i didn't think it was relevant but openly to me seems like the one insure tech that that made the decision out of the gate like gate opened up and they're like why aren't we working with independent agents instead of trying to replace them Yep. Yep. And that's why their growth, and we, we had him on the podcast about a month ago, I guess. Yeah. Their growth, Ryan, it, it's astronomical. It's like straight up right now. Yeah. Them and Branch, right? Branch is the same yeah. way. They made a decision right out the gate and said, look, 53% of the population have their business with independent agents. So you right. know, why deny that distribution model? You know, and right. I think um I think it's a big misconception in the industry that technology like ours is trying to replace the agent. That is absolutely not the case. We want to enable the agent. We, we find there's a nice balance between technology and human beings. And that's what we're trying to create. And it's literally, you know, you don't want to call it the, the sweet spot of insurance for consumers, but that sweet balance between a human being and technology is what we're trying to create. That's like the the technology enhances the relationship. Yeah, man. And that's what people are going to love about independent agents in the future. And I think the one thing I didn't get to ask uh, Cheaton, which I wish we could have talked about, I wanted to get his opinion on what the customer experience is going to look like moving forward, because I think so many carriers talk about customer experience this and we want to enhance it that way but i don't think many of them have a plan for how it's mm-hmm. going to work incorporating their independent agent partners and so well, it's I'm like very customer experience curious. customer experience but yeah you know <laughs> yeah yeah exactly. but then they're saying hey you sell the deal and then we're going to take the client over here and we're going to you know right. hold them hostage it's like that's not a customer experience and so i'm really curious to maybe get your guys's opinion on what you see the customer experience looking like as we evolve. Well, I mean, I've always said, and you know, my beautiful wife who's sitting in here with us right now always says, you know, everything in moderation. And I always say, why well, can't both be true? Yep. Bradley used to just be like nails on a chalkboard. I think when I said that to you, but no, no, I, yeah. I, I think I, I still think there's a blend there between old school relationships and somebody See, see, the one part of this equation that nobody ever really talks about, and I've said it four or five times on this podcast, is I don't care how somebody buys insurance. They can buy it however they want to buy it. But I'm telling you right now, whether it is Warren Buffett's wife or girlfriend, I can't remember if he's married or not, or anybody in America. He's married. When they're house burns to the ground that person wants to talk to scott howell and he wants to talk to him right then yeah because whatever he thinks about insurance when the kids are getting airlifted off i-65 to uab hospital Mm -hmm. and it gets real real then then insurance is at the top of your mind and you want to speak to a son of a bitch that knows what he's talking about and you'd really like to have that guy's cell phone number or him, you know, call the agency and it like I do after hours. If it's a claims emergency, it forwards to my cell phone. Mm-hmm. That's who you want to speak to. Yep. 
and until something changes and it's better and AI and whatever, that to me is the pillar of insurance is when that bad claim happens and you can hear it in their voice. I had one call me the other night, a hot water heater busted in her attic and she had water pouring on her floor while we're talking. Uh. And she calls me at eight. What time was it? Like eight 30 on a Friday night. And she is basically just mm -hmm. distraught. Like, I don't know what to do. And I said, well, the first thing you need to do is go turn the water off the street. Yeah. But that's what I'm talking about. I think technology is great. And I think we all as agents need to wrap our arms around it and utilize it and, and do things like glove box and meet that customer where they want to be met. But at the same time, you're always going to have somebody's house burned down and they're going to want to talk to Bradley Flowers. Yeah. Well, I think, so I have a, a keynote presentation I've been working on since the beginning of COVID on customer experience. And I've been saving it selfishly for an in-person conference. Right. Blow, just blow the doors and I'll, off of it. I'll, <laughs> yeah. I'll go into a little bit of the ethos of that right now. I'm not sure what the word ethos means, but I've heard you use it. Yeah, go ahead. So, Sounded good. you know, there's tons of tools out there that enhance the customer experience. Yep. Okay. What my opinion of customer experience is and where agents need to be looking at, I'm going to tell you a story. So when, when I went to work for the last company I worked for, I was warned about a client. Hey, when Sally comes in the office, look out. Stay away from her. Don't try to go out of your way to help her. She's mean. The the worst things you can say about somebody. Right. I'm like, shit, I'm kind of scared of Sally. Now, is this coming from management <laughs> or the other agents? This is coming in the from the CSRs in the office. Okay, okay, okay. Not okay. management. Gotcha. Um, I'm like, all right, got it. And true, true to their word. Yep. Every time she came in the office, it was a fight. It was like yeah. she came in ready to battle. Everybody's blood pressure's going up when she's coming in. And things were not great when right. she came. It was just like, oh, God, here she comes. You know, yeah. finally, one day, Sally got frustrated and canceled her insurance. Mm -hmm. Guess where she went? My wife's office. Mm. Uh, Guess what happens when she walks in my wife's office? We're about to get into culture, aren't we? No. A little bit. When she walks in my wife's office, literally, I am not exaggerating. She hugs everyone in the office. So happy to see you guys. Bring some cupcakes and, and pastries at Christmas. We literally, my wife, we announced we were pregnant last week. We are literally considering her to be our nanny. Wow. But then in that agency culture, though? No. That, that her culture, her what, culture over there was. It, it is, but you here's know, what happened. Sweet, all, you know. Here's what happened. She probably came in the office one day mm -hmm. and she was having a bad day. Yeah. All the people listen to this. I hate to tell you this. There is no situation where somebody's dealing with their insurance company that you are the highlight of their day. Correct. You're not. You are not the highlight of their day. So you have to take that into consideration right. when you are talking to people. Right. She probably came into the office, no telling what was going on in her life that day, yep. in a pissed off mood. Right. And instead of hearing her out, letting her vent, they gave it back to her. Right. And it was just like a volcano from then on mm -hmm. versus going into another agency that has phenomenal culture right. and will hear you out. And I think the ethos, the, the, the nucleus of customer experience is understanding that you are not, not the highlight of your customer's day. And how can we as insurance agents make that better? Correct. We can make that better from tool, with tools like Glovebox and with the tools that are out there. But at the end of the day, this is all about hearing your customers out, letting them vent, and understanding and having empathy for their problems. Would love for you guys to discuss that. I, I talk about it all the time, Paula Dean and Sweet Tea, when people yeah. come in. Now, granted, there there is always going to be somebody in your agency, probably around 5% of your customers, clients, members, whatever you want to call them, that you just don't seem to be able to connect with and they're always mad but I, I i every single person in my agency will have two or three customers that don't like this person but love this person because yeah. somehow they've yeah. been able to connect on a personal level yep. you know whether it's shared experiences or maybe they sat down with them and they got on a topic that was other than insurance and they realized wow we got a lot in common mm -hmm. 
and then that's the person they always want to deal with. And you can't let them cuss you out. No, I tell my oh, team, no. you don't oh, let them no. cuss you out. No, no, no. But no, that ain't but you have, that ain't to, you have to hear them out when they have issues. And sure. I can't tell you how many times a day, Scott, I tell people, yeah, you know what? Insurance companies do stupid stuff. Yeah. And there ain't nothing I can do about it, but I can at least sit here and hear you out, and Absolutely. we can do better to rectify that problem moving right, forward. Right. And we, we have a video that we show. I'm happy to send it to anyone on the podcast. If you want to text me, 251-237-9383. Uh, it's a video that we show every single employee on their first day. Mm-hmm. Okay, so this came from Kenneth. Kenneth is uh, my lead account manager, my lead service person. Kenneth is a former manager at Chick-fil-A. Mm-hmm. And every new employee, their first day at Chick-fil-A, they are shown this video. And it's a, it's a scene of a bunch of people at the counter at Chick-fil-A. Some are mad. Some are happy. All, all different kind of things. And the camera pans to each person. And above their head, a little fault bubble pops up. And it says, husband has cancer. Mm. Daughter's failing school. Mm. All, everything that's going on in their mm. life. And it, and it shows you to treat people with empathy right. and grace and kindness with on the premise of hey look yeah they're kind of being a little rude to me but you never know what's going on and i think when you approach stuff from that way it just sets the tone of that customer experience and then these tools these technologies just enhance that times a hundred correct i'm happy to send that video to anybody that wants it i want to see that video that video sounds awesome i think uh, i mean it's not as cool as like i made it out to be like like we could put something better together better but it's obviously working for them you know yeah no, it sets the point for sure. I think, uh, I mean, at our agency, and I think a lot of agencies struggle with this, they focus so much on the front end sales process. And then everything after that kind of falls by the wayside. We felt it right. when we were hitting milestones and premium, when we hit 20 million, 30 million, 40 million, you know, we had growing pains on the customer service team because like, we got really good at selling insurance, but now we need to actually back it up. That piece of paper that right. that person just bought from us, that expensive piece of paper, Scott, to your point, it's hard to create a process when you're trying to grow and to kind of match that experience you created to get them in the door with, hey, we're going to be there on the back end as well. And so right. we had a we had a big struggle with that. That was tough for us. And it was tough for our agents, too. And I brought this up and I don't think I, I don't think it was on the podcast. Maybe not. But with the openly CEO, I think when we hung up, when we stopped the podcast mm-hmm. and I or maybe it was before then, I don't remember. But I said something about their growth, and he was just kind of like, yeah, we were started with eight people, and this year we're hiring some ungodly amount of people. It was some number that I was like, oh, my God. And I said, well, I said, your problem's going to be scaling because, you know, when you start growing the way that Andy and Ryan grew that agency, and you, like you said, you get really good at selling insurance, mm-hmm. then, okay – Who's going to be our renewal person that's going to mar- remarket for us? Who's going to be – how many account managers do we need? How many VAs do we need? The growth of your agency, and we're kind of there in our agency right now, when you're growing so fast, and I sat down with one of my commercial account managers the other day, and I said, I have got to have you tell me when you feel like you're in the weeds all the time because I don't want you to quit because we've got too much premium Uh for you to manage on a day-to-day basis. And you just constantly feel like you're in the weeds. Well, we're there now. We grew so fast. I have less producers today than I did a year ago, but I have more service people because I'm trying to put those, those bricks into place now. That way I would rather do it now and stifle our growth slightly than have to pull a bandaid off two years, three years, four years down the road. And it caused a ton of pain and affect our culture, which is ultimately like, yeah, like every, everything. You, yeah, it's everything. It's the, your culture is the root of everything. Yeah, Ryan, let me say this, and I'll I'll, I'll I'll get back with you in just a second. But if I went to Walmart and I stood at the doorway, which I've always wanted to do this, I have this romantic dream about you standing get a reader at Walmart. That's amazing. Very. Yes. Can you do it in the glove box, sleeveless shirt. Listen, I've had a romantic dream, baby. I'm I'm not talking about that kind of dream romantic dream for five years he was talking to kim by the way not me for five <laughs> years about going to walmart and asking the manager to let me stand outside and hand out business cards i've always wanted to do that just to see what happens so i've done that before you have you know how i did that uh-uh i signed up to be a salvation army 
bell ringer. Oh, and there it is. Business card. Everybody that dropped some change. Here you go. Wow. I love that. That, that was when I was a lot more gung ho and full of piss and vinegar and all that. How'd it go? You know? How'd it go? I love that. Fair. 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 I read the road a couple policies from it. Yeah. yeah. I've always wanted to do that. Anyway, not saying anyone should take advantage of a charitable opportunity. I, I cleared it. Everything was good. <laughs> sure. They were tickled to have somebody come in. Do the. And they're like, yeah. hey, if we're short staff right now. If you're willing, a short volunteer, if you're willing to do it, we'll let you know. Anyway, right. continue. I think if I stood outside of Walmart and I asked a thousand people that walked in the door, your house burns down or you have a car wreck, do you want to A, call your local insurance independent agent who has, you have their cell phone number to talk about the claim, or do you want to talk to a call center employee in Des Moines, Iowa? Yeah. I think a thousand people would say, I'd like to talk to my independent local agent. I don't think you'd get one person that wants to talk to a call center person. Am I, am I right or wrong about that? You're right. No, yeah, you're exactly right. What's happened is because the service experience is, is, is so hard to access for everybody with all the different carriers and the documents that are floating around that you need at this point and that point, the problem is independent agents are getting bogged down with things that don't really matter that much. You know, 75% right. of your inbounds are stuff that doesn't really matter that much. And so... Yeah. then you can't deliver on when you really need to deliver in those situations. Like, Oh my right. God, you actually do need to talk to somebody. This is a human element. This is, yeah. you know, time for sleeveless Scott Howe to come in and save the day with the, you know, with a right. cape on. And, and so that's what's happened. And that's why we created our platform to be able to give that back to independent agents so that they can be there when they're needed. And, and that's, I think, what a lot of agents miss they're like oh my god i'm gonna get removed from the process and i'm not gonna be viable anymore and it's it's not that you're not viable it's just you're viable when you're needed and i think that's why, why don't that's you kind of a what marketing campaign together do some videos where you're like hey you wake up tonight and your house is on fire who would you rather call oh i've done do that yeah, i'm saying that. like you need to like do it do lean it. lean and into it lean, lean into that it. and make that your run that and i mean yeah god i would love to help you do that that'd be, like that'd be a lot of fun freaking you know house you know how and i've got video of a house down the street from mine four or five years ago that i was taking my son somewhere during a weekday yeah and that house was fully engulfed i mean there was there was no chance of saving it so here's the and problem. And I drove with doing right that. by. It was so hot that on the road I was on, I could feel the heat from that. So here's house. the problem with doing that is that's going to be really crappy for that person whose house oh, burned down. I, I wouldn't so here's do that. What you I need, wouldn't do well, that. here's what you need to do. I wouldn't do that. I'm telling you, here's what you need to do. I did. So that. Hey, I did. Local, I will say I thought about running out there and standing in front of it and doing a video. Local <laughs> fire departments. Yeah. Do controlled burns. Right. They are public record. Yes. You can call your local fire department. Have a them, fire chief told me this. Hey, the next time y'all do a controlled burn, they just control burn know. one of her kin folks' house yeah. about two weeks ago. You you need to go stand in front of it. Yeah, you got to do that. That's, that's what and it's do. okay if it's a controlled burn. Right, you right, know, right, right. Yeah, that'd yeah. be amazing. Um, marketing. But that's I would like agents. Like it, it goes back to like the people don't want to buy a drill; they want to buy a hole. Right. That every sales trainer ever has said is that you're standing in front of what you buy the insurance for. Exactly. You're you know? you're providing context context yes you're not Where, just buying the piece of paper you're buying the protection which has yeah. always been our problem in the insurance business is if i sold mercedes benzes or or bmws i've got an actual product that yeah. you can look feel taste smell take home for the weekend mm -hmm. we don't have that and yeah, we don't have the emotions behind it all it's not emotional right. whatsoever yeah that's a great idea bradley that yeah, is a fantastic invoke, idea. Invoke emotion. So, Ryan, our, before we get off the show, and I know we got to go in just a minute, yeah. are there any updates? And I know we've talked about some really cool stuff that you guys are coming out with. Can you talk about that yet, or are you still in kind of the the beta testing type phase of that that we want to hold off on? We are creating this concept of the client's interfacing system, right? The, the client... Right the client interfacing system for independent agents to leverage. If you think of a piece of pie, you've got, again, you've got your CRM, your AMS and your Raider. You got three fourths of it. Every independent right. agent is missing that fourth piece and it's that client engagement piece. So we're closing that loop, right? We're not just right. looking at service. We want to be uh, a prospect calls in, they want to get a quote, hey, send them the text or email to your platform and let them get their data inputted in so they can get the quote done, man. Send them on their way. Right. They don't want to sit with you for half an hour. I mean, you're a nice guy. We love 
we love you guys, but you know, people right. don't want to talk to their agent for a half an hour. So we're trying to close that loop, man. We're trying to be that engagement platform, not just a service platform. And, and with it, we're connecting carriers right and left. Um, and, you know, trying to make this thing kick ass. That's our goal, man. We want to make a kick ass system for independent agents. That's, that's it. Well, sp- yeah, but specifically what I was talking about is I knew you had something that you guys were working on for referral partners too, that I didn't know whether that was that you wanted to talk about that today or not. You, you remember us having a conversation about um, that or. Yeah, we've got a lot of different things that we're working on. Yeah. I won't talk about one of them because it's awesome. But you know, <laughs> you know, when that client that calls in and they say, Hey, I'm going to go with you for home, but I'm going to keep my auto with, with uh, whatever carrier they're with. Sure. What if I could, what if I could tell you when that premium goes up in six months for your client, right? What if I could tell you that? So I'm not going to tell you exactly what it is, but we're working on something sweet. <laughs> yeah. So my idea that I had with my glove box app is, is you can link up, the clients can link up other policies that they don't have with my agency, with my app. And it hit me the other day. I'm like, I need to be telling people that. Like yeah. when I meet John Schmo and he doesn't have his insurance with me at a party, you can say, I can say, hey, man, if you download my app, you can actually link all your policies up. <laughs> yeah. Guess who gets that data on the back end? <laughs> yep. You know? <laughs> We're working on something. And my sweet favorite part it. about that is it would piss my competitors <laughs> off. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> look, they wouldn't know. At the end of the day, it's the user's data, right? We're empowering policyholders to take their data and do with it what they will. And I think everyone's so afraid of like, oh, we give them too much data, they're going to know too much, and they're going to shop and they're going to leave. I think it's the opposite. I think if we give policyholders their data and empower them to use their data, they're going to appreciate it more. They're going to remove the smoke screen. There's nothing behind the curtain, right? And right. it's, it's, right. it's real. And so that's our philosophy, man. Let's empower the policyholder and let's give them the data that they need to make, make a good decision. So 100%. no more hiding behind the smoke. Well, guys, Ryan, thank you for being on the show today. We want to thank Chayton Kandari for being on the show with us today too. That was pretty cool to have the guy, uh, the digital guy with, uh, with nationwide insurance on here to talk a little bit for a few minutes. I hate he had to get off because I had some other questions. That question you had, Ryan, I wish I wish we could have gotten to that too. So from this moment on, from now on, hopefully until the end of time, the Insurance Guys podcast will be powered by Glovebox. And I hope that uh, each and every one of you will go out, not telling you you have to get the Glovebox app. I am telling you you have to go out and at least look into it. And Ryan, before we leave, tell them, tell them where to go, how to, how to t- take a look at your product. Gloveboxapp.com. Super easy. You can get a live demo. You can get a recorded demo. Trust me, we will, we will knock your socks off. And uh, Nicholas Ayers from Better Agency would make fun of me for saying this, but it's made by agents for agents. Then he would hate that. Go. But I'm saying yeah. it anyway because it's true. So. Oh. <laughs> that's, you know, that's when I... When it we, is, though. Yeah. It is, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> well, you know, when, well, I, so many when we people started to say pop- that... And they've been an agent for eight months and then they right. decide to, oh, instead I'm going to sell to agents, right? Right. And it's the by agent. Yeah, it's like, That uh, was my tagline when we started this podcast. Is it uh, for insurance? agents by agents? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it, it sure was. was. So it was. I, mean, I love to Nick Ayer. Shout out to him. But yeah, he's going to hate it that I said it. Just like my business partner says it, he hates it when we say innovate and reimagine. So I'm going to leave those off. But. <laughs> Well, Ryan, we appreciate you being on the show today. Guys, we talked a lot about technology today. Again, your responsibility is to go out, see what works for your agency, not just Glovebox, but a lot of the technologies that are out there to help move your agency one step forward to greatness if it works for your particular agency. Uh, But I would damn sure rather have Glovebox as my mobile app than some carrier getting all my data on their app. But Hey, that's just me. Maybe you enjoy carriers having all your data. Remember what I always say. Rewards come from action, not discussion. Get your ass out from behind that desk. Let me tell you something, people. You better listen to what I'm saying. July 1st is going to be here before you know it. And all this COVID shit is going to be behind you. Stop making excuses because a bunch of y'all are going to do it. You're going to be making excuses. It's the, well, COVID. Well, uh, You're not going to have any more excuses not to get your ass out of that desk and go out into the big bad world and sell insurance and build relationships and make 35 calls a day and write two, three, four hundred thousand dollars a month in premium. 
the damn excuse making and the speech making is going to be over and then it's going to be time to go sell insurance so that's coming get ready get ready to get out there and go sell insurance and meet new people and move the ball one step forward to greatness go make money for your family your Do wife your, your husband hell maybe for your friends maybe maybe your friends need some money go hell go make money so you can help support them too um for your family, for your for your husband and wife and your children's college fund, your parents that are struggling out there today, write good business for the companies that you represent and write good business for the agencies that you represent. Bradley Flowers, I love you. Thanks, man. Thanks, Ryan. Ryan, thank, thank you. Guys. So- I love Kim. you guys. <laughs> hey, Kim. Kim. Kim wanted to say hi to you. <laughs> hey, guys, you are listening to the Insurance Guys podcast, and we love each and every one of you. Thank you for supporting the show. We look forward to being back with you real soon. Take care. Thanks for listening to the Insurance Guys podcast. If you need to know more about me or you need to get in touch with Scott, you can always reach me at theinsuranceguyonline.com or email me at iprotectins at gmail.com. And if you need to get in touch with Mr. Bradley Flowers, go to bradleyflowersinsurance.com or email him at bradley at sarahlandinsurance.com. Guys, we love you. Thank you so much for listening. We look forward to being with you again real soon on the next episode of the Insurance Guys. Take care.